Hello and welcome. Um, <clears throat> today I'm talking about SUSE Package Hub. So who of you already know what SUSE Package Hub is or is using SUSE Package Hub? So probably more than a, the half of, of the people here. So um, I'm just um, explaining what Package Hub is. Um, I will be a little bit shorter than usual. Um, but to give you also a background um, how Package Hub basically evolved and um, what was the reason um, SUSE created Package Hub. So if you imagine, um, basically, <clears throat> this was the situation um, that, uh, or the reason um, Package Hub was created, because um, back in time it was around um, SLES 12. Um, SLES comes with a, a lot of packages um, supported packages, but um, there are still some packages missing for some customers. So we received um, some requests from customers adding more packages, um, even uh, without support. So they can just use it and um, for any convenience. So <clears throat> another reason was also um, that we received some requests from customers. It's very hard to find um, official packages for SLES besides the packages that are coming uh, in, on SLES. So if you, um, this is an old screenshot, so it looks different today. So if you search packages on um, software open SUSE org or in the OBS in, in, in the open build service, you will find many projects for example, this is if you search for Tmux, you find several projects where you find packages for not only for Lee but also for SLES 12, 15, and so on. So you can <clears throat> just use those packages, but in an in a enterprise environment and for the customers, it's very <clears throat> sorry, um, it's very um, it's sometimes very difficult to just use packages that comes from somewhere, some source that they basically don't really trust. And you never know if, if a project is going down or if going to be deleted, and then you, you're, you're sitting with your version of the package. So that's why we created a package hub. It's basically another project in the open build service that hosts um, the packages that comes with Leap and um, it's easier to access. So the easiest way for the customers is always to use one source of truth. So it's basically the guest. Yast and the SUSE customer center is basically the, the door to uh, additional modules, extensions, and additional software. So that's, that's the, the view um, SLES customers have. So we had to put um, this this project into the SUSE customer center basically, so that's available through through Yast in a on a on an easy way. So talking about packages, um, it all started um, with just a few packages. So that means we received, for example, um, requests from customers. Um, they wanted to have the KDE Plasma five packages in there. So this is um, SLES 12 around that time. So the, the, the number of packages are not really that accurate, but just to give an idea uh, where we started. <clears throat> so this is basically um, SLES 12 around the number of packages, 2,500, can be plus or minus some hundreds, um, that a customer gets when he installs less. Compared to OpenSUSE Leap um, at that time, a few more packages available for free. And of course, factory is uh, way ahead above 10,000 packages. I'm talking about source packages because binary packages are, the number is a lot higher. So we started adding the KDE Plasma 5 packages, which were like around 400 packages or something like that, and some more packages. And that's basically what Package Hub was in the past, during around SLE, SLE 12, 
uh, time frame. Um, OBS, I think this is, uh, you all are familiar with the OBS, so I will just uh, go through it very quickly. So this was the only option <clears throat> for us to use because uh, SLES itself was basically built on a, in, in the build system. So um, we just used it, create additional project, but for customers, as I said, it's not that easy to use if you're a developer or a packager. It's, uh, yeah, it's basically your source of truth. Um, there's a lot of confusion about um, package hub or backports. Who of you knows the difference? One guy. <laughs> so that's why I'm, I'm, I'm explaining it here, because you always have to think that um, from a customer perspective, it's basically on the right side. So as I mentioned, the view is through um, Yast or the SUSE customer center. So there we named it package hub. But the project itself is hosted in the open build service. And back in time, um, the project wasn't named package hub. It was just named backports because the packages were backported um, from from the leap version, so that's um, yeah. You need to to understand that when you are talking about the backports, that's the project inside the the OBS, and when you're talk talking about package up, it's basically the the, the view uh, the, the through the customer center view um, to the uh, backports project. And of course, you can access the packages um, inside OBS directly. Um, so that's also one option. Um, it, is, it is quite hard to, to um, add a few more hundred packages with um, giving support. So um, SUSE has only also a limited number of uh, employees. And uh, so, um, all packages are without support, basically. But the great thing about it is that every package that got built in the OBS for, for Package Hub is tested. Um, basically, they are running RPM lint checks to make sure the package doesn't conflict with any package that comes with SLE. So that means that no, no files are replaced or overwritten by that package. If that would happen, RPM lint um, just throws an arrow and just shows, hey, um, this package has a conflict with a package that comes with uh, SLES. So this is a mechanism to make sure that every package on Package Hub doesn't conflict with any package on, um, on SLES. Um, and it doesn't break the supportability. So if the customer has any problems with other packages um, on SLES, it doesn't break basically the support. Um, it can be different if the customer installs just randomly packages um, from um, other sources. So the system would be then really hard to be supported by SUSE. Okay, what's the current status? So I already showed you like how it was from a package perspective, like the number of packages that we added to package up back on um, in, during this less 12 time frame. So today it looks quite different because we have also, um, or we followed a different approach um, because during less 12, um, we put all the packages from, uh, that we put into package up from factory. So every package has to go through factory, so probably some of you know the statement factory first. To make sure that the package get reviewed and then we could pull it in. Um, with package hub for slash 15, we are doing it slightly different because we want to make sure that we align as much as possible with open source Leap 15. So we are taking basically every package that doesn't conflict with the SLES package from Leap into package up 15. So that's why basically the number of 
of packages in package up 15 is that high. And as you can see, it really gets almost is close to, to leap 15. Um, this is because it brings another nice side effect. Um, because with leap 15, you are able to migrate from leap to slash. So that means um, with the bare minimum, I think server installation from leap, you are able to migrate it to a slash system. With package hub enabled, you could even install more packages, like additional, like the KDE, Plasma 5 environment, tools like Tmux or whatever you like. And then you can migrate it and you have these tools, these packages also available on this less system. So from a package level, these packages are also binary, ident binary, binary identical because basically these are the same packages. They just got rebuilt for less on, on package hub. Um, and that's the second thing we changed. So basically every new package has also goes through leap then. That means that um, it gets then reviewed by um, the OpenSUSE leap people and then we can just pull it in into package hub. And also the updates that are going to leap, we are just pulling in um, to package up 15. Um, what we also did, this is something more internally, um, we also use for quick testing, um, we are using Kanku. I don't know if someone of you already know Kanku. So it's basically a continuous integration testing system. Be we are let me put it that way. We, are, we want to use uh, OpenQA as well, but OpenQA is a little bit more bigger in terms of like the framework is a little bit bigger. And Kanku is a little lightweight framework that you can just pull up a virtual machine and uh, do some package testing and then just um, destroy it and then um, get your results. Um, by the way, if you have any questions, just wave your hand anytime so I can answer them. So, um, how to contribute? Um, there are several ways um, you can contribute to Package Hub because you don't need to be a package maintainer or a developer or someone. Or basically, you can contribute on several levels. So, for example, if you're a developer, you just want to deploy or yeah, share your code, you can, as I already mentioned, make sure that you just create a package, get it into Leap, and then it can be also pushed to package up, and then it get delivered to uh, any less installation. And um, you can, as a developer, you can see it as a deployment channel, basically. So package up helps you to distribute um, your software, but it has to be free software, <laughs> so or open source software. That's yeah. Um, if you're a package maintainer, it's much more easier because then you are probably already familiar with OBS, um, and then you can just, if your package is already in Leap, you can just submit it then also to Package Hub, and then you're good to go. If you're a customer using Slash. You have several options. Um, either you are also a developer or package maintainer, then you're good to go. But if you don't have the knowledge to add packages to Package Hub, you can also ask either the community or you can ask us as well to assist you um, to find uh, package maintainers or um, people um, who are willing to do packaging. Um, to get in uh, the software into package up um, you want to use. So, any questions? No questions. So, um, feel free to visit us at, yeah. 
I can I can just repeat repeat. So the question was if, if, if a package from Package Hub basically damages the system and if, if the customer then get, still gets support. Um, so the question is yes and no. <laughs> so the thing is um, usually the support is, is able to identify the, the package and the cause. So um, if it's a package from Package Hub, then I'm sure we can we can help at least the support and the customer to get rid of the problem or to fix the package. So um, it's you you have to yeah you have to look into the specific problem then. So just for the for the stream or for the record, um, Scott already mentioned that basically, if there are problems with the package, um, we have to look into it to just make sure that we just either drop the package or just fix it. Okay, no more questions. Oh, there's one more. Ah, good question. So the question is how and where you can request packages. So that's very deeply hidden because we don't want to... <laughs> no, seriously, um, the thing is that we are, <clears throat> we are also thinking of like having, having something on the website, on packagehubsuda.com, that you can vote or you can just um, add missing packages you, you need, basically. Um, currently, it's not in place, so you can drop us an email at packageup at suze.com. You can just ask us if it's in low hanging fruit, let's call it that way. So an easy package that builds on SLES and doesn't have any big security concerns, then we can just add it. But if it's a package that has a huge dependency list and some security concerns, um, then we have to really talk about that and think about that. Because also, usually, the, the package maintainer should be involved in that process. OK. No more questions? Thank you very much. And enjoy the rest of the day.